Hi, Scott Bruder here. So what I'm going to do today is take a look at the socket tester and see that for the price of returning it um, and paying the freight uh, for this European version, for the US version, uh, it was actually a lot cheaper just to you know, hold on to it or uh, kind of count my losses and uh, keep it to myself. So uh, what I'm going to decide to do is see if I can't, you know, modify this so I can use it in North America as a quick test. I'm not intending to, you know, leave it uh, plugged into the wall for hours and hours at a time. Uh, so the first thing to do is, you know, make sure that the circuitry in here actually works. So first step we always go to is like, let's take a look at the manual. The manual for the professional socket tester says, warning, please read the manual carefully before use and strictly follow the safety instructions. You know what? I, I think that's good sound advice, first and foremost. Major function, three-hole socket line sequence detection. Well, we have three prongs on our electrical circuit. So I, it sounds like it might work. Now, granted, you know, between our phases in North America, there's 110 volts, 120, whatever we'd call it. Uh, but over in the UK, between our phase or their phases, it's 220 straight to 240, 240 straight across, 220 to 240. It's the same kind of uh, variance. Um, the functions are that it does the phase voltage measurement between the hot and the neutral, um, the leakage voltage between the neutral and uh, ground. And the unit itself says it does the RCD, which I'm assuming is the UK standard, or GFCI uh, test. GFCI is the ground fault circuit, what's the I stand for? Uh, interrupt? Let's go with that. If anyone wants to comment and tell me I'm right or wrong, please do so. Safety instructions to avoid possible electric shock or personal injury. One, please check the tester carefully before using it and confirm if there is any damage or if there, if there is any damage, please stop using immediately and send it to repair. Uh, two, check whether the tester is correct. Whether the, that's pretty good. Insert the tester into a known correct socket for testing and check if that test function is correct before using it. That works. Uh, it, the RCD test must be properly operated under the correct wiring. Okay. Uh, we may have to test this on the bench before we take it out in uh, the field and start using it. Uh, when testing the RDC, please close the equipment on the power line to ensure the power failure does not cause any harm. Uh, when testing in public places, it must be permitted to test. So I'm going to elaborate on this. I feel that if you're going to test a circuit, make sure there's nothing else on it. No equipment plugged in. Like, don't plug it into a power bar and test it. Like, put it right into uh, the receptacle on the wall. And if you need uh, to confirm that that might be the only thing on that circuit, uh, do that. Because uh, some, you know, receptacles will uh, be connected in series to other receptacles uh, in, the, in the home or business. And the last one is when using the tester to detect the wrong wiring of the socket, please provide, find a professional electrician to maintenance wiring. I'm assuming that's to maintain the wiring. You know what? Those are all, you know common sense, but, you know, very well needed uh, pieces of direction. The part I wanted to kind of get into was the technical specs. Take a look at that. Technical specs right here in the manual. Operating voltage from 90 to 250 volts, from 45 to 65 hertz. Well, we in North America have systems that run between somewhere in like the high 90s to the low 120s. So that falls well with inside of that. And you can see that it also goes up into the UK voltages as well. Uh, in North America, our electrical system runs at 60 hertz. Uh, in the UK, it runs at 50. Well, this is an operating voltage of 45 to 65. So North American voltage falls into the range. So I'm starting to get the inkling that this device here um, is the same circuit board inside, just with different connections, depending on where in the world it's being sold. So let's keep looking. Uh, phase voltage. Uh, we are only going to be measuring one phase with this, right? Because we're just going to plug it into a normal receptacle. Uh, we're not going to try and plug it into like a uh, receptacle for a dryer or an oven range. Uh, but the phase voltage, same, same standard goes. It works 90 to 250 volt and 45 to 65 hertz. Accuracy plus or minus 2%. That's not bad. But this still is a North American range. We fall inside there. Leak detection. Uh, between 0 and 99 volts, uh, 
45 to 65 hertz. Well, this kind of works better for us because, you know, granted you shouldn't have any leaking voltage in, in your home or business, but, you know, 99 volts is a heck of a lot of leak voltage to, uh, to have uh, go through this unit. So I think we're going to be well with, uh, below this number. Uh, operating temperature, 0 to 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah, uh, I'm in Canada. You know, it does get below 0 C uh, here, uh, and it uh, sometimes gets above 40. But, you know, I plan on not using it outside after storing it in the, my truck for, you know, days at a time. Operating humidity, 20 to 75%. You know, that makes sense. Storage temperature, negative 10 to pos uh, positive 50. Storage humidity. I'm not too uh, worried about a lot of these things. Uh, altitude, I feel we're about 2,000 meters or, or uh, give or take. Uh, the uh, RCD test is gr was it? greater than 30 milliamps. And the RCD working voltage is... Ooh, 220 volts plus or minus 20 volts. Um, that, I, I want to look more into this and see, you know, if I need to worry about this button uh, doing something different uh, in a UK environment. But I would assume that it does um, a fault to ground test. So your your hot pin to your grounding pin, uh, just to kind of see if the, the system will will shut it down or you'll, you'll pop a, a GFI, which, you know, that's what you're supposed to do, is you're supposed to have the GFI fault so that you don't electrocute yourself. Uh, so the GFCI test, you know, was it uh, greater than 5 milliamps? GFCI working voltage, 110, give or take 20 volts. So there's that whole, you know, 100 volts to, uh, oh, sorry, 90 volts to 130 volts even. Um, I'm. This is the concerning part. Uh, note, RDC, GFCI functions do not coexist. I'm going to research more into this moving forward before I hit that button. But I feel like I want to test out the voltage stuff before uh, before I dig too far into that. Uh, warning, test time and not more than five minutes when using. Please be careful not to touch the RCD button so as not to trigger the leakage protection switch causing unnecessary losses. Yeah, you don't want to push that button and have your, uh, have your circuit that you're working on go. A socket tester, insert the socket tester into the standard three-hole power socket, then observe the indicator light and the error table, judge whether the socket connection is correct, and then pull out the tester. When the wrong connection is detected, please find a professional electrician to repair the wiring. That's fine. Uh, phase voltage leakage, uh, plug in the tester into a standard three-hole power outlet. Please read the voltage, LN, and leakage voltage, E and E. Note, when the socket connection is not correct, the leakage voltage cannot be measured. That makes sense because there's no ground to see how much electricity is getting to ground. Uh, for the RCD or GFCI test, see, the fact that I see this in the same blurb, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, venture a guess that it may be different names for the same thing. Uh, insert the tester into the three-hole power socket with the correct wiring. Trip the current. Uh, the trip current will be displayed on the display. Press and hold the RCD key for more than two seconds. Well, I like that that whole have to push for two seconds. It shows that I'm not going to likely uh, accidentally do it. Uh, at this time, the normal leakage switch will trip off. If it does not trip, it means that the leakage switch has failed. <laughs> okay. And please find a professional electrician for maintenance. Interesting. And then the error table, which is also listed on the front of the test unit, is very similar to the error table you would get uh, on one of those, like I said, little testers with the three lights. It's probably even the same. Uh, actually, it is. Well, at least I'm guessing, because normally if you see the two first lights lit up on one of those three testers, it indicates that it's correct. And then you can see open ground, open neutral, open live, 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 and ground. Perfect. Missing ground. Um, note, uh, live slash uh, ground uh, is reverse. That's that's kind of scary. Um, now, the question is, is yeah, ground is literally, is your ground, your grounding pin, the bottom, bring a power bar over here, your grounding pin on the uh, on the receptacle is the bottom center. The If you look at it like a smiley face or an open mouth face, you've got your left eye, your right eye, and your, your ground. Um, so just to continue, uh, this tester cannot be distinguished between, uh, cannot distinguish between uh, neutral line and ground. Wires reversed. Okay, well, let's... Uh, that makes sense, right? Because in, in an AC system, you're, you're completing the circuit to 
to your 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 ground uh, or well correction in your neutral. So that that does make some sense. Clean with a wet cloth. Cleanliness or other or cleanliness or other chemicals are not available. Note after cleaning the tester, make sure it's dried before it's used. Okay. So I feel confident that my initial test will either uh, end up in failure and a bunch of smoke and maybe some fire, or it's going to work. Now, I'm not going to jump right in and, you know, disassemble this right away. I mean, I want to do some simple tests. Like, the simplest test I have is I've got this tiny little multi-converter that I picked up uh, when I needed to use one of my AC adapters uh, that uh, came from another country. Uh, it uh, supported all of our voltages here in North America, but it didn't have the right plug on the end. So I had ordered the proper replacement US plug um, with the two flat pins as opposed to the two round pins. Um, it was going to take two to three weeks to come in. So what I did do was I went to the, the dollar th store, the thrift store, and I picked up this little guy just to do a test. Now, because I don't want to plug it in directly to my receptacle, just for testing purposes, I want to put it in this little power strip so that I can control if the unit, how the unit works directly. Um, now, as a test, I know the plug I use every day uh, is grounded. Uh, so just a test, you can see the little power bar shows that you know, it's protected because the power strip is, hasn't faulted and it's grounded because it sees a path to ground. So I'm going to turn that off. So in our test, I'm going to take my little adapter, put it into the plug and stick this all the way in. Now I know it's not going to test correct. I'm probably going to see an open ground error so I should only get the first light lit up but what I'm really wanting to see is if I can get this little LCD panel to turn on and start registering some information about the voltage I have here so let's uh, turn it on and see so I got the first light like I thought because there's no ground the display kicked on um, it's saying the RCD uh, is 18 milliamps I'm um, that might be for the entire circuit um, uh, or you know what we're what we're gonna you know put across the test I'm not gonna push that right now um, I can see that from our hot to neutral I've got 119 volts and from our neutral to earth I've got nothing so of course in a in a home environment that would mean there's no leakage but I'm not gonna see that here because I'm not making a connection on the ground so it's it works now granted do, do we know if it's accurate or not or if it's way out to lunch um, there's only a, a, a simple way a few simple ways to do that is if you have a, a volt ohm meter or a multimeter or a multimeter depending on where in the world and how you pronounce it you can test across the pins on the receptacles uh, here and make sure it's known what I like to do especially with my multimeters is I like to know if they're out. So every couple months, uh, I'll take my two or three multimeters and I'll uh, plug it in uh, to the exact same circuit and see if they all read out the same uh, voltage. And, you know, as long as they haven't, you know, they're not way off and left field, um, I'm going to continue using it. So this test here initially tells me that if I were to change the wiring inside, I could use this in a North American circuit and save myself having to pay the shipping cost to get it back. Uh, look forward to a, another video where I dive in a little bit deeper and test some direct wiring. Also, uh, I'll uh, do some research live in a video to look at the difference between uh, RCD and GCFI. Uh, so check back, like, subscribe, um, I don't mind if you guys start a conversation in the chat below. Um, I love seeing what other smart people uh, have to say, as well as I like seeing good questions from people that are interested in learning. So once again, my name is Scott Bruder. Like and share, and uh, I look forward to making more videos and hearing all of your comments. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you.